Hello and welcome to Women Matters in the Wisdom Factory. And today we have the title, uh, how is it that somebody is falling back on the ladder of the development, let's say, and somebody is falling down in the ladder when there are situations of trauma and chaos. So situations like the one we are living just now. And before we go into the topic, as always, we do a short check-in. And I think I start as I'm talking already. I'm Heidi from Italy, from the wisdomfactory.net. Punkt. That's German. <laughs> wisdomfactory.net. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit mixed up with the languages. Yeah, I'm quite fine. I'm preparing the conference and the online conference of the Integral European Conference. And I have already done some rehearsals with people I have invited to, to do tomorrow. We will do another one. And it's quite exciting, you know, to connect with people and, and, and to, to learn more about these things. So I will have two busy weeks, but I'm really happy. That's me. I give over to Gertraud. Yeah, I'm Gertrude from Germany in the middle, north of Frankfurt, and um, just had a wonderful weekend. First, I did a bet on a house that we want to buy, and then I, we had our anniversary, wedding anniversary, so we had a wonderful weekend, and, and I'm looking forward to, because I think that conversation is really, really worthwhile. I'm handing over to Monia. Thank you. I am in Vienna, middle of Europe. And yeah, we have summer already. So we are sitting outside and I'm eating lots of ice cream, which I shouldn't. And yesterday I had a very interesting Zoom talk with yeah, uh, John Jon Freeman who is a spiral dynamics expert, and I can only recommend him to you because he's very, very clear, very straightforward. And uh, yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to today's talk with you. Who do you handle over? <laughs> I hand it over to Anne. <laughs> Hi. Hello, I'm Anne Roberts and I live in a village just south of Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, on Saturday, we completed a four week online program called Quest for Next, which was uh, holding an online uh, purpose quest with a group of younger people. And it completed on Saturday and it was quite magical, quite, quite magical. Um, I know John Freeman well. Um, I have a blog called Shared Insights on Elderhood. And I interviewed John first on uh, a teaching on the stages through the lens of spiral dynamics. And he's very clear, he's great. And then we had a conversation about what happens in this stage of elderhood in terms of adult, de adult development. And the hypothesis that with more time, resources, space, um, you can elevate up the spiral um, quite late on in life. So that was a very interesting conversation to have. And I'm ready for the call today. I'm complete. And I hand over to, now am I pronouncing it right, Hannah Lee? Yes, you're perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. I had an interesting last week, um, but on Saturday I had a wonderful time with my daughter. She's turning 30 this week, so we had an opportunity for her. And I've had very interesting discussions with some friends in Europe over the weekend as well. So I'm good. Um, I'm also really looking forward to this um, discussion and being together with you ladies, because it is, especially in South Africa, it's very evident what's busy happening in terms of what we're about to explore together. So it's wonderful to be here with you and to see what emerges here today. And I give over to Tammy. Hi everyone, I'm Tammy and 
Uh, I'm Canadian and I'm currently in the Netherlands. Um, it's been it's been amazing to be here, um, and I've just Harry and I are trying to figure out uh, what our next steps are in terms of traveling because I'm meant to leave soon. Um, so we've we're just finding out the uh, actual steps and. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I'm in the middle of thinking of where uh, I'll be over these next months, and um, yeah, it's 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 a journey. So we'll find out as it all unfolds. Um, but I'm glad to be here today, and and it's good to see you all. Yeah, thank you. So what Monia mentioned, it was the rehearsal for. Uh, our contribution with John Freeman and uh, Lorraine Laubscher from South Africa uh, about uh, the pandemic seen through the lens of the spiral. I will publish it also on my uh, channel, but and I think at the conference we will talk maybe about different things. I'm, I'm quite sure it was only to, to get together and have already a feel of it. And there we were talking about the the leaders in the world and where they are and you know and um i don't know if you want to go there but um we we talked last time about feminine le leadership no uh but what do you think in your own experience for you the situation which you are living in now is it getting you does it kick you up or does it kick you down or do you stay uh, at the same level, what what do you think? Well, I'll go first. Um, I was asked to do a constellation. I don't know if any of you know about systemic constellations, which I'm trained in, and and I was approached to do one with someone who was struggling in this time. And what it revealed was quite remarkable was in their ancestral line, there was poverty. And if you think back to generations where survival was pretty um, extreme, you, you, know, you know, people who live close to the land, maybe our grandparents' generation or, or the like that, um, this person had uh, people who lived in what was called the workhouse in the UK, you know, where they had no money, close to the land, and there was a huge gap between haves and have-nots in, in that time. And what he was experiencing was somehow that ancestral line rising and that it was pulling him into deeper fear about his own survival. That was coming through the ancestral line. And with a level of sensitivity now to survival now. And um, just the whole trauma. I mean, if, if you're following the Thomas Hubel work, you know, about... Um, the collective trauma and the healing of tra collective trauma, it really helped me to see at the individual level how that can rise and how it's not just my own upbringing, but it might be generational and coming through the collective. And he was certainly feeling he was dropping down into um, deep concerns about survival. And the constellation enabled the seeing of that as a way forward for personal and he collective healing f for him. What do you think about yourself? How do you uh, see this moment of crisis? Are you asking me personally, Heidi? Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm pretty tapped into um, Zach Bush, Thomas Hubel, Charles Eisenstein, and I believe that we are in a time of cultural evolution. Um, the empire is crumbling, is the metaphor. Um, I listened to Zach Bush recently about death, and 
there is a real optimism that he holds about um, what death really is and how welcoming it is. So I hold an optimism at the um, high level metaphysical. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm not concerned for the suffering that, you know, and, and alleviating the suffering. So I don't, but personally, I'm not worried. I see that, as Barack Obama says, it's like this arc of, of history, it's this arc of evolution, and that the virus is an evolutionary mechanism. And it's, it's revealing what's wrong with the pharmaceutical industry, the agricultural industry, political, social. Um, so I'm just holding trying to be a light that's shining balance and finding new solutions to really, really big complex problems. Can you re reframe the question, Heidi? In times of chaos and trauma and uh, uncertainty, some people, let's say, go to the worst of themselves and some people go to the best of themselves. Or in integral or spiral dynamics terms, they can step up a, a, a level in their personal development or they can fall down to, to lower levels, you know? So that's, uh, that's the question. And my question was, uh, how do you think what, what it means for you, the situation? What, do you think that you are uh, falling down some, somewhere into the level of survival? And I, I like what you said, and that this fear is, not only our own fear, but it is an ancestral fear because in the past, almost everybody had this fear, you know, and we only thought we are over that and we are different now, you know. Or, or do you think that this can enhance you to, to either to do something very useful in the world or to, to really change your mindset towards something more Oh, how can I call that? I don't want to call it efficient. Uh, I, uh, something more useful, something more helpful. So, yeah. Is it okay with that? Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, I think I've got a bit of both, personally. Um, I have a couple of arcs of, of work uh, that I've been on, and I'm, I'm coming out of a year and some of of several people dying around me. So there's a real, uh, you know, all of the realities of what that is alongside this greater trauma of so many people um, dying at the same time and people living in fear. I'm not living in fear. Um, I'm, I'm the safest I've ever been, I feel in many ways. Um, and at the same time, it's creates some space for me to really do deep work that feels incredibly difficult. Also, you know, really going deep into those places and having the, the time and the space to do that. Um, so on the inside, that doesn't feel like uh, being at my highest but I do feel that it is at my highest uh, to make that effort to do that deeper healing inside myself. So um, both and. And um, yeah, I, th I feel that um, the realities 
of what's happening in the world right now allow me to see, uh, um, appreciate what I have and also clarifies what's important. And so uh, I, feel, I feel really good about a lot of the choices that I've made. And at the same time, it is difficult and it's hard to tease apart what's mine and what's the collective. And, uh, and all the while knowing that doing this deep work serves the collective because I'm a brighter light, I'm a cleaner uh, human. Um, sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Uh, although I'm grateful that I have uh, colleagues and mirrors and friends that uh, reflect to me that that is important work and, and I do know that for myself. So that's a little snapshot of my personal world. Mine is also interesting. <clears throat> I'm also very positive like you, Anne. I also feel it for my, myself, for my own evolution, and then of the collective as well. So I'm, I've been in a very creative space in, since the lockdown started. And yet I'm also very aware of the suffering, especially around me. Um, but I have been triggered lots, like also to do deep work like you, Tammy, like real deep work. And I'm grateful for that because it feels like that is uplifting me to another level because I'm also becoming more clearer. It's very interesting to, in my own family situation and around me, to um, see patterns of other people around me um, that, that does, <laughs> they do fall back. And if I can stay present with that without identifying with it, and when I'm not identifying with it, I'm, I can share some calm and peace. But the moment I allow myself to be triggered by what happens to them, and I look at myself, whether it's a reflection of me, and I don't see it as mine, so it's sort of this, the discerning part is, can I then stay present to it and be there for them? So it's a very interesting dynamics. And I love your work, Anne, about the constellations. I think it's very powerful at this time. Um, and also the embodiment part of what's happening. And my own, my own relation to mortality is what you're talking about. So I myself don't fear death at all. But yet the suffering around me, it's difficult to ignore it. So it, it should sort of lifts me up to now do something. You can't wait any longer. So there's some urgency. Suddenly, you can't really wait. You have to share your gifts with the world, whatever it might be. Thank you. I'm complete. For me, it's also let's say both. In the first two or three weeks, I was in fear. And not so much in fear of getting the, yeah, maybe also of getting the infection, but I know that I have a good immune system and things. But, you know, as a good Enya type four, I'm preoccupied of everything which could come in the future. And so I was engaging in worst case scenarios, you know, what is when then the burglars come and I'm alone here and things like that. And then I realized I got a clarity. I have, a, since these uh, times have started, I have a much bigger clarity about things. And I succeed to tell me this will come when the time comes. But now it's not the time to be preoccupied. Now see what is going on, open your eyes and see what you, what you can do. And I realize a lot of things which before I sort of have intuited, but not really wanted to look into it. And that's also the question of death, you know? I mean, I have experienced it in other people too, and lately, and my uh, relationship to it is always still, you know, so and so. But now I can see 
that I don't really want to go there, despite I'm talking about it. So I'm getting more real about my, my inner um, dispositions and I don't try anymore to, to hide things in front of myself without knowing uh, the answer, except the answer what that death, death is, uh, when death is concerned that when time comes, time comes. So why uh, being pre preoccupied more than you need now? At the same time, I would like to help more people who are in difficult situations, which I don't see um, the possibility at the moment. Um, I feel these times both very exciting and very discomforting. And this is the occasion to, to really embody what we always said, that this is the feminine quality, to live with uncertainty, to be comfortable with uncertainty. Now we are asked to really find a way to, to not be dominated by, by uncertainty. And I, I tried to do that. And I feel in many ways I'm liberated from, from many things which that I have to do, I have to do, I have to do. I don't have to do anymore. I do, but I don't have to do. So in many ways I, I can liberate myself from old patterns, which I had seen before, but which were still very much operating. Now I see them better and I Partly, at least, I can release them. And this is a, a big gift, I see, for myself. So I'm quite happy. I have to say I'm quite happy <laughs> meeting all the people, talking with people. And, you know, it's, it's really exciting. And at the same time, I know that for many people, it's a, it's a problem. And I do really pray that people can get out of this fighting mode and really concentrate on, on what is important now in their own lives and uh, in their relationships. So, yeah, I think that's what I have to say to that. All right, since Gertrude isn't <laughs> charging. Uh, looking back, I had obviously some kind of premonition because uh, many people died last year, many of our good friends, and I didn't feel like celebrating the new year. So for the first time in decades, my husband and I just sat together and reminiscent and I bought lots of puzzles all the time uh, I, don't, I think we now have 50 or more uh, so I'm running out of space now um, so it felt yeah as if I had been expecting what happened uh, on a level I didn't know at all and I'm not, I don't feel happy. I feel sad. Most of the time there is a latent sadness about what is happening. But I'm, yeah, changing to the virtual reality uh, is quite fun being with Heidi and talking to you and it's uplifting and facing the numbers given on television every day about people newly infected and the clusters that start and how they actually show what's wrong with our system right now. Uh, yeah, there is also a kind of sadness and I'm, I don't know what I can do about it. Uh, 
we are doing our part, the puzzles, and when one puzzle is finished, there's the next one waiting, which helps concentration and gets my husband off his laptop and typing political statements to uh, what is happening because now the opposition is trying to make some small change, political small change by attacking the government, which did very decisive and very good measurements. On the other hand, uh, when you hear, we are not isolated. And when you hear about what is happening in Switzerland, so many more infections in Belgium, in the Netherlands, uh, there's always this why and how, and I have no answers for that. So I find it challenging uh, to live with uncertainty, but not frightening. Um, yeah, amazingly enough, the men in my life are much more hesitant about what they are going to do. If they are going to visit a birthday party of a very old friend, the 80th birthday party, or to meet outside the house without a mask. So they are much more hesitant, at least the men in my life are much more hesitant than I am. And yeah, I don't know what I should make of that, but this is what I'm working on. I don't know if this is deep work, but it keeps me busy. <laughs> All right, Gertrude, up to you. Actually, I think the men know that the statistics go um, works against them. So I think they are more scared. Um, I was thinking if that is a developmental thing that happens or if it's just a brain state, <laughs> like if adrenaline overwhelms the whole system, then I'm just in this flight, fight, freeze mode and cannot think properly. And it might not be that I, I'm not in my developmental lane, but that my brain just doesn't work at the moment. So, um, so I think there is a distinction between I'm really falling back into only survival and only my own, um, that, I mean, like the perspective that only my perspective or the per perspective of my group is relevant. I, I'm, there are some people that put me into a group on Facebook or somewhere and and it's like, oh my God, they are so like, and, and, and then they put out a video um, and then somebody else, who, who, who is validating it? Because this video was taken a year ago. And so, you know, like people just take what they get and say, that's the truth. And, and let's say Obama gate or whatever that that might be. And, and so I'm recusing myself from all this. So I really don't want to hear it. I, I want to have the statistics and maybe a little bit of news, but not not these conversations. I'm, I'm just out. And for myself, I, I feel like really doing shadow work really i mean really big stuff coming up and and i get when i'm i'm i get scared or i i th i think this is ops opportunity i don't know but this is a challenge to the normal and and so these things just stick up their heads that want to be addressed. So sometimes internally it's, it's turmoil 
and at the same time i can see it as a as challenge but also like oh my god it's good that it's coming up and so i can let go of it or i can release it or oh my god <laughs> i've been working on that for five years and finally i get what it is all about so like maybe the the guy you were working with and yeah no man uh, no wonder <laughs> i didn't get a feet on a, uh, on the ground so it's it's really like a mixed bag and but i don't see it for myself as developmental thing if i it, it might be a flash of adrenaline <laughs> that just gets me and then i can go get over and breathe and yeah and recently i i've i'm a, in a training right now it's a short one but um it's called emerging dialogues and this is about how to um yeah like the new we how can we have dialogues in which there is this you can point zero you can call it causal or whatever where we where what comes out of my mouth is fed by the collective or by this this um not easy to name space and and to see the different people that are in the same training zoom of or <laughs> of course um and, and and there is somebody who is participating somebody i mean one part of me participating and really getting and the other one is saying oh that's interesting <laughs> where oh, that's very green that's very you know like there's this this it's not even uh judging but but like like trying to to get a hint on where people come from and i was talking to the lady who is doing the the training and i said for me it's about yellow and turquoise or teal and turquoise i really want to have access to that new we not just a lot of um yeah integral whatever people in the same room and talking about but really being in that new way and that the new can come into the world and and i'm very interested in that so so that's a journey right now and another journey is to buy a house in times of corona <laughs> that's that's something and and it really brought our family together Oh, an internet glitch. <laughs> the family is together, but she is. And she's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, are you back? Gertraud, oh, we, didn't, we didn't. I don't know where, you, where I left you. But... You said the family together. It brought the family together and then you froze. <laughs> yeah, it's a family project. And, and I think this is also a new we we just had at celebrations or so but like really going deep down and 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 one doing the finances the other one this one and so it's yeah and seeing the suffering i can i, I I don't know how, how I should say that. How can I have empathy without pity or without going into that and, and feeling myself miserable? And, and I think, and, and zooming out completely. So it's, it's kind of a, mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
it's work. It's not either or. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, <laughs> my question would be, how come that we can um, face these things this way? And what does it depend that is there a special ability? But Anne, you wanted to say something. So yeah, I just wanted to sort of celebrate all that I've heard, you know, and, and the consistency and the, the luminosity of each of us, you know, holding um, a beautiful space of clarity. I just wanted to really appreciate that. Um, I love the thing about recuse myself. Gertrude, I, I just, you know, there is something about saying I do recuse myself from quite a bit of it because what I'm learning is we're in a, a stage of the empire. And I was talking to my son-in-law about this the other night, about the empire is crumbling is one of the metaphors. That, and there's this furious fighting to keep the empire going. And that is the hero's journey and Star Wars, you know, and it really resonated for him. And so, but I want to hold a respect for all the worldviews that I encounter as I, I listen to it. And there's many people are doing the best they can in this fight for survival. You know, our politicians, um, doctors, nurses, but they're in a paradigm that the people that I feel hold the truth hold another paradigm now. And so I'm trying to stay within the new paradigm that is emerging and hold a respectfulness of those that perhaps don't see it, don't know yet that it's coming. Um, and... Oh, something else I wanted to, to say, and it's kind of gone. Um, oh, yes, experimenting. That was it, you know. So, you know, the transition curve, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's model way back, I think it was the 70s of denial, shock, you know, bargaining. And what I'm finding is um, when I watched a talk with Zach Bush a couple of weeks ago with on the Pachamama Institute with Lynn and Bill Twist, which was an amazing thing, he talked about we need to find our way to what he called global grassroots movements that enable new social, political and economic realities to come forward. And I just realized that my calling is for my own and others finding the way to what's theirs to do in this time. And I encounter a number of people, um, particularly elders, who are confused and um, immobilized, not so well, when, when you can't move, not immobilized, but paralyzed almost. And I'm working with them to say, what's the first step? to find your way to what's yours to do. Let's just experiment. And I feel that is a gift. The more of us that just experiment a little, you know, what was it someone said, you know, the first step and then the next step. So that's the optimism I want to hold is this, this mobilizing of us um, so that we can look back in 20 years time and say, Hmm. Yeah, it was worth doing. That we made a difference. Go, girls. Uh, <laughs> Anne, uh, could you just put in the chat the name you mentioned now several times? The talk you heard. Okay, it was. Um, have you heard of the Pachamama Institute? They look after no. the Amazon mm -hmm. with indigenous people, Lynn mm -hmm. and Bill Twist. Mm -hmm. And they invited a doctor, Zach, I'm putting in Z A C K Bush, who is a triple certified doctor who is really speaking for what the reality is from my perspective. So, and he's speaking tonight on a call at eight o'clock. He's doing another, you know, so at the Patch Mama Institute. And it was, I sat for 10 minutes after the call speechless because it was so impactful, the clarity he was bringing. 
Sachbusch. Okay, thank you. What was your question again, Heidi? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My question was, uh, how come that, for instance, we all six in the room have a sort of an uplift and, and a greater clarity of, despite of all the questions, despite the insecurity, but we have the feeling that there is something to be done by us personally, a shadow work and all other things around, although we don't really know what exactly. You know, and how come that we have this motivation, I could say, or inspiration? And what is missing to people who, who don't have that? And with other words also, what could we do to, to help them to, to come into a space where they can see the things more, I don't want to call it positively, that's such a, you know, much used term in, in the, to see the possibilities they have themselves instead of actually i try to do that um i'm i'm doing once in english and twice in german um a work we have been uh, we have come up with it's about looking what gets triggered and then look at the other side and what did I learn out of it? What strengths did I develop? And then go the next little step and embody it in the future already fulfilled. And, and there are some people really coming up and, and coming with this like this is the truth <laughs> this is how it is and um so i think um yeah offering things like that or and as you did the the, the constellation work over zoom and and things like that so i i think we already do this in different versions and i was thinking what is the difference i think if you never did anything like that during your whole life you just did whatever you do just education and and uh, job and so you you just go on then it's very hard to not be triggered, not be consumed by what's right, what's wrong thing. So I think it's easier for people who have done quite a bit of work, whatever that might be, therapy, uh, constellation, um, all kinds of spiritual work, and for others, they are just like, um, they don't have tools to, to work with that, to, to, to go outside the box and look at it and have another perspective. It's like, this is the truth. And, and this is what I'm consumed by. So... <sighs> And I think it's not so easy to break into this if it overtook you. So like the demonstrations with uh, all kinds of conspiracy stuff. And so I had that in, when I was working in nursing homes and was in charge. Um, I heard screaming from the kitchen, went downstairs and and, and they were fighting about something that was a misunderstanding, but everybody was like, this is the truth. And uh, to, uh, yeah, I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah, this is, sometimes people really are like that. They just 
they only have their own perspective or maybe a second. My party, my <laughs> religion, right or wrong. So that's my two cents. Yeah, and in terms of spiral dynamics, that would be unhealthy blue. Unhealthy blue, the fundamentalism to think I'm right and you are wrong. And by the way, that's in the first six levels of development, this is the, the challenge uh, that people think they are right and all the others are wrong. And so hopefully, we make it into second tier where we can appreciate what the others have to bring to the table. I was just writing a blog post about that, exactly what you said. So it's very much on my mind. And uh, yesterday they were saying that 60 or more percent are still in beige and, and purple and uh, maybe red, you know? So how can we, how can something helpful come out of this situation if people are deciding who are in these stages of development, you know? So that makes me a little bit sad that I hope we will build leaders who are, have better possibilities to hold perspectives. Now, if I look at, <clears throat> I was all oh, sorry, Tammy, you can go. No, thank you, Tammy. I, I was um, sensing into this yesterday about, because over the weekend, something happened to where very good friends really went down into the spiral. And I couldn't, under, they made serious decisions about their lives regarding that. And they were more on the upper part of the spiral before. So I was also just saying, because we have this discussion today, it was so synchronistic that it really happened the day or two before. And without judging it, I was trying just to sense into it. And then what came up for me was that, and I'm, I'm not saying it is a truth, but it's a possibility, that what we used to hold on to, whatever it might have been, in our earlier development stages that gave us comfort and safety. Um, that it, in times of cr crisis, some people are going, trying to look for that safety, which they felt in their bodies, in their cells, maybe when they were younger or at a younger age. So, because logically it doesn't make any sense, but for them it's a reality. And the way they then express it, it's, it's beyond fear. It's something else. It's a, it's a weird, weird dynamic. So I, I just sense then that a lot of people who, who um, fall back is perhaps looking for that sense in their bodies, uh, that memory of safety. So it, it's beyond even thinking or even feeling. It's, a, it's like a survival instinct thing that they naturally goes back to in times of crisis. And I think you were right, Gertrude, and you're all about saying that, um, or I resonate with that, <clears throat> that um, if you don't work on yourself, you've been through lots of trauma, you sort of, you know, you sort of strengthened inside, your inner strength. So you, the place that you move into the world is from a different place, regardless of what's going on, that you can then look at it from a place of awareness that's they're not identifying with the situation, but can see it for what it is, that clarity and that you spoke about. It gives you more clarity of what's really going on here. You might not know what it is, but you just look at it in a different way. So you can stand back a little bit because in crisis, we get consumed by it, so we can't see anything else. And I think it's, if we had gone through lots of crises in our lives or with inner work, then we're more prepared for it. Thank you, Hanalee. Um, 
yeah, I, I'm really inspired by um, your all of your thinking and that, uh, and it, I want to mention the privilege of being able to consider these things. Um, and I think that part of why I, what I sense in why we're, we, we find a sense of uplift from these things is because we were born for these times. You know, each of us has our path and journey of knowing and purpose and, you know, following that path. And sometimes it's more outward and sometimes it's more inward. Um, for me, it's hard to really uh, answer the question of why isn't this happening for others? I think it is happening for others. I think it's really hard to discern at what level in people this this transformation is happening. Um, and at the same time, we're all faced with um, a uh, a wall of very dark information. So, you know, this many people died today. And um, these are the stories and these are the really stupid decisions that are going on in these different places in the world. And I think that that level of um, irresponsibility demonstrated by people all over the world uh, and, and directly related to human life is soul destroying for many people. And so that reality is part of what everyone is faced with as kind of a, a, a kind of mental torture that allow that makes us feel like, well, what is going on here? Like, really, is this, are these the choices that we're making? Is this who we collectively are? And I think that that weight, uh, I certainly know it weighs on me um, as a person connected to this whole. So in my life, what's happened is that I, you know, as I think, see things happen in the world, as I'm evolving, I'm responding and thinking of what I can do and, um, for, and, and continuously coming into this, um, into this uh, relationship with this sense of purpose that I have. And it looks different depending on where I am at what era of my life. And I think that I'm, I'm both inspired and held back by uh, what is happening right now. You know, in a sense, there's, there feels like such a, it seems like such an insurmountable task to have true intelligence and um, justice and wisdom be uh, what's living at the center at this in, on our planet. Um, and I think that many people are affected by the evidence otherwise. And so, um, and at the same time, we were born for these times. And, uh, and I know that each of us helps in large and small ways every day. Um, and I feel that there's this, th there is an opportunity. This is a, this is a, a, a moment, a huge moment in time where uh, there's a lot of opportunity to really shift things. And yeah, I'll leave it there for now. Yesterday we talked about solidarity as a spiritual attitude, no longer a political attitude, but a spiritual. And uh, this is a train of thought I'm still holding on to and developing. Uh, and this is something that really gives encouragement to me. So Heidi, thank you again for making it possible that I could listen to John Freeman. <laughs> Thank you.
Actually, it was Lorraine Laubscher who was uh, def defining the meaning of solidarity throughout the spiral. And that was very, very, very interesting. After I brought in the topic, she really went, and she's 90. So, oh, what a model for me. <laughs> <laughs> Really, she is so yeah. clear in her mind, you know. Her body is not so good anymore, but the mind is amazing. And I'm so glad I could bring her to the conference because if it was in Hungary, she couldn't have come. She has the the um, uh, oxygen, you know, she needs oxygen. So how could she travel for 15 hours or something? So, and now she can participate. And it was really for me a huge desire to, to bring her in. And so I asked John Freeman if they could talk together and it, it will come out very nicely. <laughs> it was the brilliant idea because you could see very clearly how a man pinpoints and how a woman meanders around and she brings others in and, and this, oh, and this I remember. And, and then he comes again, wham, <laughs> let's get it back. So that was really fun to watch yesterday, yeah. Yeah, and I also appreciate her experience. And I love when she tells the stories from her life because a 90 year old life with all this experience. So I, I said to, to John also, we, we need to be a little bit indulgent because I want her to tell the stories, you know, so as a testimonial for, for later. <laughs> Maybe we do it some other uh, uh, show with her only talking about her memories. It would be nice. Uh, in this connection, um, John posted a, a video from Claire Graves, who is the originator of Spiral Dynamics, and I will share it with you because to me it was very clear again to, to see how he uh, came to the understanding of these levels of development. And he didn't use colors, and I find it much more helpful uh, <laughs> to name the, the stages instead of call them colors. So it's, for me, it's getting deeper. I will, I will send you the, um, the link to that. I found it very interesting. And also that, it, he was in the 70s. Um, that is one of the few videos which seem to have come out only now. So people, important people should be uh, able to be remembered by video, so you have a feel who they are. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to, to speak also. I don't know how you feel that we have uh, it's spoken an hour. Do you feel we have come to a natural conclusion? To me, it seems a little bit like that. So we could do a check out and then Talk next time. Great. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's always it's always awesome to just be able to to be with such incredibly intelligent women on all the levels. So thanks, everyone. You're giving compliments. <laughs> Appreciation. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I want to thank you, Heidi, for holding the space now for four years or how, much, how long? It's really incredible. Um, and uh, <laughs> it just came out of a wonderful process. And, and uh, you and Tammy and I meeting for the very first time all together. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm really... I'm, I'm proud of us, <laughs> of us, uh, to, yeah, to keep that, that conversation going, even though sometimes we don't really know where the next step is or what the next uh, thing will be. And, and at the moment, I think it's very, very useful, very supportive to, to talk about things like that so I'm, I'm 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 really looking forward to to our conversations even though sometimes the, it's jammed with zoom calls all days but uh, this is in my calendar and doesn't move so 
Yeah, thank you. We were the founders, we three, and I'm glad that uh, other people came in, you know, and yeah. some went out because then it sort of came to a sort of a dead end and uh, other new people come and then it's getting new perspectives. It's also important for a group as, as we are. So uh, I'm grateful, Han, that you are coming and Monia for a while now and uh, Anne, I don't know, she dropped off, but can happen. <laughs> and uh, no, she, Christine she on purpose. come back too. She had Pardon? to go. Ah, okay, good. So, um, yeah, I'm grateful that you are coming. As I said, I couldn't think out all these things by myself. So I need other people to talk to. I'm not a theorist in the sense that I can think it through and then bring it to paper or to a video. I have to have the exchange. So thank you. Uh, somehow it runs down to put it in a nutshell, how to handle in insecurity. And if it's, and maybe it's about resilience as well. Yeah, and thank you as always. It's been very nourishing and heartwarming. Thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you for your presence. I just feel these very nurturing, caring, intelligent, loving women and the embodiment of whatever is happening, of just pre being present to this in the way you are when I'm here with you, strengthens me on an inner level. So besides the discussions itself, which is all so amazing, and explorations is to feel to be with you is really precious in this way and I'm just feeling that we're busy embodying something which we might not express know yet how to express but we are busy embodying it for whatever is to come so thank you for that and thank you Heidi for, for inviting me to this as well yeah and I think what we are doing is counter giving the counterfact for people who say the attention span on Zoom is three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are so deeply listening a whole hour. I, I, I don't feel to be deviating anytime. So we are a good example that it can be different. <laughs> this is so, an emerging dialogue. <laughs> wonderful. So thank you and we we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>